Uh, the first order of business is always the declaration of pecuniary interest, and I'll remind you of your responsibility. And declare. Then number three, we have uh, no additions, deletions, or amendments to the agenda. Uh, the next item is adoption of minutes, and it's been moved by Councillor Minaj, seconded by Councillor Grace, that the Council adopt the minutes of the regular Council meeting of August 28, 2017, special Council meeting of August 28, and the planning meeting of August 21st, 2017, as presented. Errors or omissions or comments? All in favor? That's carried. The next item is the Committee of the Whole Minutes, and it's... Uh, of August the 28th, it's been moved by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, second by Co Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. The Council note and file the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of September the 11th, 2017, as presented. Any errors or omissions, comments? All in favor? That's carried. So the next item on the agenda is the report of the Committee of the Whole, and it's a general government report of August the 28th, 2017, and it's been moved by Councillor Myatt. Seconded by Councillor Madison, uh, Mike Myatt and Councillor Madison, that Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the general government report dated August the 28th, 2017, recommending the following. That Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores accepts the 2016 annual audited financial statements as presented by Michael Bolton of BDO. That transfers to or from reserves and reserve funds as recommended at the August 28th Committee of the Whole meeting be approved for the 2016 year end. And the Council adopts the 2017 Town of Saugeen Shores Corporate Strategic Plan as prepared by MDB Insight. Any questions to this? All in favor? Opposed to any? That's carried. The next item is an Environmental Services and Transportation Report. Uh, of August the 28th, and it's been moved by Councillor Grace and seconded by Councillor Dave by Et that the Council of Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the Environmental Services and Transportation Report dated August 28, 2017, recommending the following. The Council authorizes staff to submit an expression of interest for the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund for top-up funding for the installation of a twinning of the trunk water supply to the Southampton Water Tower and copy MPP Elisa Thompson on the application and two, that the Town of Saugeen Shores directs staff to apply for a grant opportunity from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Asset Management Program for a risk management plan, that the Town of Saugeen Shores commits to de developing a risk, manage risk management plan through a request for a proposal for consulting services in its proposed project submitted to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program to advance the Town's Asset Management Program, and that the Town of Saugeen Shores commits $10,000 towards the cost of this initiative. Any questions or comments to this motion? Councillor Minaj. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I assume that copying MPP Lisa Thompson includes making a phone call and having a discussion with her about how valuable we think that this is? Otherwise, does, is it not conceivable that she gets many of these and then... And, and could be you know stacked on the left hand side of her desk and we want it on the right hand side or vice versa depending on whether you're left or right yep I can give her office a call not all in favor that's carried the next is the community services parks and recreation Report of August the 28th, and it's been moved by Councillor Minaj, seconded by Councillor Grace, that Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the Community Services, Parks and Recreation Report dated August 28, 2017, recommending that Council approves Option 5 as the preferred renovation at the Port Elgin Beach House and that staff is authorized to proceed with the tender process. Any questions to this motion? Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm curious to know um, if we have a a timeline of when we'll have a chance to discuss funding mechanisms for this. Um, when we originally allocated the money as a, a placeholder in last year's budget and then again in this year's budget, it was discussed as projects came up, we'd talk about individual projects and that would also inclu include a funding component that it wasn't just automatically assumed that everything would be debt. So um, when is the right time for that discussion to take place? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Vice Deputy Mayor has raised that issue. We've started looking at that in concept of, of 
different contexts of all of our projects. We heard one uh, tonight, and there's a, a number of different ones that we need to bring a report back to Council so that we're not marching along with projects and, and the funding isn't clear on it. Um, I expect that we would be back uh, before budget um, this year or so in the next couple of months. So just a point of clarification to the CAO then, please. If I heard you right, this is going to be decided before the 2018 budget deliberations or it will be decided and included in the 2018 budget deliberations? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, our plan would be to bring back uh, funding options for projects as they evolve early. Um, when our previous presenter uh, was speaking, I was going down, I have a sheet here, I went down all of the lists that are on the books or, or happening and it totaled over $30 million. And uh, I think it's, it's time to circle back with Council and say, here's uh, the funding options, here are things that we need to consider. Um, if, things, if, it's, if some projects are unaffordable or, or not uh, some that Council desire, it's better to make those decisions early uh, rather than, than continuing to invest in them. So uh, for uh, this particular project, uh, the funding solution or recommendation would come back prior to budget. Thank you. So in other words, then we will see somewhere we will see that this, this has been carried for two or three years. It was a number one priority of this plan or, or this discussion, or it's a number two or number three priority, and therefore it should move ahead now. What kind of language like that? We'll see that accompanying the, the documents. I, I don't think that's, I mean, the question was where there was the financing, not what the priorities were. I mean, if you want to ask that question again, that's fine. But, but. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, again, our, our, the, the, the concept is that we want council to make informed decisions. Uh, you asked and, and we reported back a number of months ago in terms of our debt capacity, and that's one way to fund projects. There's multiple ways. Uh, the Vice Deputy Mayor spoke uh, tonight about uh, the, the project having a, a fundraising component. So there's multiple ways that, that projects can be funded, grants, uh, partnerships, a number of them. Um, I am concerned, as, as I know many of, of you are, when we start to tally up the number of projects and when we uh, look at our funding uh, envelope, there's, I think, some decisions that Council should be making earlier rather than later. and, and uh, putting a, a, perhaps a, um, a measure of scale and scope on some of these projects. Any further questions? All in favor? Opposed, if any? Scary. So the next one then is uh, the Committee of the Whole Report for August the 28th, 2017, and it's been moved. By Deputy Mayor Sharpenow and second by Councillor Madison, that Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the Committee of the Whole Report dated August 28, 2017, recommending the following. One, the Council supports Private Members Bill 141 proposed by Sylvia Jones, MPP, to require the Ministry of Environment to report instances of sewage bypasses. Two, the letter be sent to the Ministry of Environment requesting that the acoustic testing for Unifor's wind turbine be mandatory and that the testing be undertaken from at least one site that was issued has issued a complaint in the last 12 months, <coughs> excuse me, and further the staff be directed to submit a request under the Freedom of Information and Protection to Privacy Act for a peer review audit co data collected in 2017 as well as all correspondence between Unifor and the Ministry related to this testing. Questions or comments? All in favour? Opposed to any? That's carried. Well, the next item is uh, a motion. Notice of motion, notice of motions or motions. This is a motion this evening, and it's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayad and seconded by Councillor Cheryl Grace. Whereas Council for the Town of Saugeen Shores received a delegation on July the 24th, 2017, by members of the Grey Bruce Poverty Task Force and the Public Health Department regarding food security in Bruce and Grey Counties. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores hereby endorses the Grey Bruce Food, food Charter that being the state of having reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, appropriate, nutritious food for all re residents, regardless of their socioeconomic situation. 
Any questions or comments to this motion? Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Excuse me. I absolutely agree, <coughs> agree with the motion. I'm, I'm just curious to know um, how we, we could put our words into action. Like is, is there some follow through that would enable us to, to not just talk the talk but walk the talk? Um, the Great Bridge Health Unit has a, uh, what is it called, a, a community partnership meeting every month in Own Sound where they discuss items like this and, about, and how, one of the steps that they come is they come to us, but they advocate in a number of ways. I think if, if, uh, if you want to go over to the meeting, I can tell you when it is, Diane, or um, I, I think that the efforts through Great Bridge Health are, are fairly successful and I, I think we get a lot better if we stay with one agency and then three or four of us trying to do something. Um, the suggestion of uh, uh, Councillor Grayson. And, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was thinking um, about the same thing, but um, I wondered um, maybe we could have some links on our um, Web, on our own website so that people could go for more detail to the Grey Bruce Health Unit's website. Um, I was thinking about whether perhaps that could be um, a subject of our shore report or something like that to get more publicity. Um, and, and then hopefully this would be of enough interest that we could, you know, maybe some volunteers from the community um, would be interested and could uh, set up something to support the the uh, the principles here. Uh, yeah. did, did you want to speak, Dave? I'll, I'll just comment to, to Councillor Grace, and then we'll get to you. I, I, I think we can. Um, I think we one way would be to really go back to this community partnership uh, group and the Grey Bruce Health Unit and ask them how we could help or support something in our specific community. And, I'd be willing to do that. I know I will be meeting there. I'm on the board, so I'll be meeting next Friday. But uh, if if there is something specific, maybe a letter to them too wouldn't help, wouldn't hurt. Councillor Dave Mayat. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, those proactive measures that have been suggested are all great ideas, and, and participating any way you can is certainly a choice that each of us has to make. And I know uh, it's a favorite of the vice deputy mayor to do the breakfast club at the. The junior schools, which is a component of food security network, but I think it's also uh, incumbent upon this council and in future councils to uh, to take any requests that come our way seriously and and consider them through the eyes of of the charter and uh, and support things like we have a we do have a food bank in Soggy and Shores and at every opportunity. When we have the Christmas parade, we collect for the food bank and, and keep those things in mind that whenever there's an opportunity to uh, to join up with one of our ongoing efforts to keep those things in mind and, and make sure that everybody has lots of food to eat. Any further comments? All in favor of that? Thank you. That's carried. Next item is a motion on zoning amendment for food trucks, and it's been moved by... Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, whereas the Soggy Shores official plan and various other documents and council activity represent the community desire to protect and enhance the charter of downtown areas through community design and protection of sig significant cultural buildings and features, and well as to provide opportunities for public consultation, open communication, and input into decisions that may affect the lifestyles enjoyed by current and future residents and business owners in the town. And whereas specifically item 3.10.2.6 indicates an, an objective to ensure that the new development is in character with existing development in the core commercial designation. And item 3.10.4.1.1 includes the following, new development shall be encouraged in the existing core commercial designation provided the scale, density and character is in keeping with the development of the area. And item 3.10.4.1.2 of the Soggy Shores official plan states that it is the intent of this plan that progressive features and positive char characteristics which have developed in the core commercial designation shall be retained and reinforced. Therefore, be it resolved that council provide direction to staff to initiate the process required to enable a zoning bylaw amendment to affect the permitted uses within the commercial core zone so as to exclude food trucks as a permitted use 
in the CC zone. Comments? Councillor Dave Mayotte. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think through uh, a brief conversation, I was able to uh, get to the what I think might be the core of this request, which is to keep these uh, like transient uh, food vendors out of the core commercial zones. And uh, I would I would think it would be probably better that we manage them in such a way through permetry or through uh, through more controls rather than an outright ban because outright bans tend to uh, tend to sometimes come back and have unintended consequences so uh, although I, I understand and I, I support um, what is trying to be accomplished here I would like to see that when staff come back that they maybe come back with a range of options that include um, from outright ban through uh, more controls similar to the way that we currently license and control food vending machine trucks and machines throughout the commercial zone on public and private land. Thank you. Uh, I agree with you. I, I, I could have our answer about when we start to write more and more complicated zoning bylaws and more and more complicated regulations. I think there's a better way of doing it, but we can discuss that if we, if this passes when it gets back. Councilor Minaj. Uh, I just actually thought about it and, and, and I don't have it carry around knowledge but I'm reasonably sure that Colta Parkette is it would be commercial core, core zone as well and there are food trucks every Wednesday throughout the summer months in in that uh, Parkette so I too would would caution that um, an all right uh, outright ban is is not what we're looking for we haven't okay I, I think we don't need to get into too much of the discussion about that. I appreciate your thoughts, but whatever they come back with, I think that's the time for the debate. And by all means, make your point. Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, 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 and uh, my uh, default position would be to agree with, with the Mayor on, on the question of regulation. I only, in this case, in this, in this instance, um, it is certainly is not a question about, about uh, banning food trucks on public lands. The, zoning, the intent here is to prevent a situation from occurring where, which is not intended, I don't think anybody would intend, where a building, um, for example, were to be demolished in the core commercial area. Um, you know, you could demolish any building in, in downtown Port Elgin or Southampton today under the zoning bylaw, and you could just park a food truck in there and then have a food truck on the private land. And we do not want that. I think that that's, that's, that runs counter to everything we've planned for in the last... Uh, 10 years uh, in terms of uh, downtown improvement plans, all, a whole bunch of things. So I think that we want to create a zoning bylaw that ensures that you can't just stick a food truck on a piece of open land in the core commercial zone on private land and call that call it call it a day. And so I think uh, um, so I think the zoning change is, is something we need to at least consider. Um, but I do not. I do not support a ban of food trucks on public lands, and I think a permitting process on public lands is exactly how you regulate that and allow it. And I think it could be allowed. But I, but on private lands, the way it's set up in the zoning bylaw, we need a control uh, because we we have opened ourselves up to a situation which I don't think we would like, or which um, the owners of properties in the core commercial zones would like. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any further discussion on this particular item? All in favor. If any, see what happens. So the next item then is uh, another motion that's uh, surface beach rake and it's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayette and seconded by Councillor Mike Mayette. Whereas the town of Saugeen Shores contains 18 kilometers of Lake Huron Beach and whereas the town of Saugeen Shores has a living document for beach maintenance and whereas the town of Saugeen Shores is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of beach facilities and removal of debris when reasonable and possible, and whereas the Town of Saugeen Shores contracts external equipment co operators to conduct routine maintenance beach grooming up to four times per year when they are available, and whereas the Town of Saugatuck, Michigan, population 950, were able to purchase to finance a purchase of a surf rake to maintain their beaches on Lake Michigan, therefore be it resolved that staff be directed to investigate and report to Council the cost of procuring a Barber surf rake, both new or reconditioned, to allow staff to be 
able to respond immediately to deteriorating beach conditions caused by weather and other environmental events without having to depend on external contractors availability and eliminate the need to rely on costly external contractors. Okay, any questions or comments to this? Uh, Councillor Dave Mayo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Um, this is my motion, and I appreciate the seconder, Mike Mayette. Um, this is to, uh, to have preliminary talks and, and exploratory uh, work done prior to going into the capital budget for 2018. I think that uh, procuring this type of equipment is not something that's outside of the price range of, of what we currently spend to have a contractor do this work. Um, I, uh, I have been in contact with the Barber Surf Rate Company in the United States and they directed my inquiry to the Canadian distributor in Burlington, Ontario, a company called CJ, anyway, I, I've got a Duke, CJ Duke uh, equipment and, uh, and they, they gave me the, the cost either through a, um, through, um, a lease to own with a one dollar buyout after five years or through an outright purchase and I think when that number comes back we'll find that it's quite reasonable and, and in about the same as what we pay to have the work done uh, by the contractor so I'm hoping uh, I'm, I'm happy to share this information with with staff and uh, I'm hoping we can move forward with this thank you any further questions Councilman Minaj and, and I realize it's wordsmithing. I just, I would have dropped the word immediately. To be able to respond to deteriorating beach conditions. I'm sure it's, it's not implied that we drop everything and rush to the beach during, during emergency beach conditions. But, but uh, it, it, does, it does give false expectations to some extent to the public that uh, they should be able to pick up a phone and say, hey, it's, it's bad. You said you would do it immediately. Okay, any further comments? All in favor? Opposed if any, that's carried. Well, the next item is bylaws, and uh, it's a bylaw to authorize an agreement with Sogging Shores Minor Ball Association. It's been moved by Councillor Madison, seconded by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. The bylaw 74 2017, being a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement with the Sogging Shores Minor Ball Association, is hereby read a first, second, and third time. And finally, pass and sealed this 11th day of September 2017. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. The next item is a confirmatory bylaw. It's been moved by Councillor Madison and seconded by Councillor Mike Myatt that bylaw 75 2017, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Town of Talking Shores, is hereby read a first, second, and third time. And finally, pass and sealed this 11th day of September 2017. All in favor? That's carried. And the final in the motion to adjourn, and it's been moved by Councillor Madison, second by Councillor Mike Myatt, that this regular council meeting of September 11, 2010, hereby adjourn at 10.01 p.m. All in favor? <laughs>